Hi. In this video, we'll be learning about selecting by class with CSS. So to recap, we've seen the general format for a CSS rule is selector followed by curly braces followed by all the declarations that define the style for that selector. And the selector defines which HTML elements this CSS rule applies to. Now we've seen selecting by tag. If we put a tag name for our selector, this rule will apply to all elements with that tag. So for example, this rule applies to all h1 tags. This rule applies to all p tags. But another way to select using CSS, rather than selecting by tag, we can select by class. So this rule will apply to all HTML elements with the class alert. Now what do I mean when I say class? How can an HTML element have the class alert? Well, introducing the class attribute. So class is an attribute that we can add to any HTML tag in order to style a specific group of elements. So let's say I had a standard p tag. I could add a class attribute to this p tag and set the value of that attribute to be alert. So now this p tag has the class alert. And what's nice is this isn't specific to the p tag. We can have several different types of tags that all have the same class. That way we can style this group of HTML elements the same way, even though they're all different types of tags. They have the same class. So when we're selecting by class, this CSS rule will apply to all HTML elements with the class alert. And the format for selecting by class is simply to put a period in front of the class name. Now say we wanted this rule to be a little bit more specific and not apply to every single element with the class alert. Let's say we only wanted it to apply to p tags with the class alert. If that was the case, then we can just add a p in front of the period, and now this rule only applies to p elements with the class alert. We can switch that out to h1, and now this only applies to h1 elements with the class alert. So this is how we can get more and more specific. Tags can also have multiple classes. If we want a tag to have more than one class, all we have to do is separate the class names with spaces. So this p tag has two classes, alert and large. That means that if we have CSS rules for the alert class and the large class, both of those CSS rules will apply to this element. So what is a valid class name? Well, there's two rules we should keep in mind. A class name cannot have any spaces, and a class name cannot start with a number. So are these two class names valid? Well, no. The first one starts with a number, and the second one has a space. So the second one would actually be interpreted as two different classes, one large and one font. If we want to update these names to be valid names, all we have to do is put the number at the end and replace any spaces with dashes, and now both of these class names are valid. Now let's, see an, let's see an example of this. Suppose we wanted to style links. Right now we have the rule that all A tags should have the color blue. In the resulting page, we see that every link has the color blue. But the problem is we want some of these links to stand out. Alert and danger and delete everything, those are dangerous links. We might not want our users to be clicking those links. So to make them stand out, what we can do is we can add a specific class to those A tags. So if we add the class alert to those specific A tags, and then add a CSS rule saying that all HTML elements with the class alert should have the color red and the font size 20, then in the resulting web page, those tags are red and they're bigger. Now notice that the color got overwritten here. Those A tags used to have the color blue, but since they have the class alert, that color was overwritten. So the idea here is that class styling overrides tag styling. And this is because class is considered to be more specific. So in this scenario, any A tag with the class alert will be red instead of blue. Both of those rules apply, but the alert rule is more specific. So the alert color will override the tag color. Let's see this in the editor. So in this program, we want to make a simple checkerboard on our web page. So what I've done is I've made a table and I've alternated each table data from having the class red to the class black to the class red, black, and it alternates all the way throughout the table. So let's see what this looks like so far. Well, right now we can't see anything because there's no styling on this table. So to see what our table looks like, let's give every table data tag, TD tag, the background color of blue. Great, so now we can see our table, but that's really tiny. So let's make our TD tags a little bit bigger. We'll give them a width of 50 pixels and a height of 50 pixels. Awesome. So now we can see all the table data elements on our page, 
But the problem is we don't want all of these to be blue. We want some of them to be red and some of them to be black so that we can make a checkerboard. So what we'll do is we will give every element with the class red the background color of red. Awesome. Now notice that it only overwrote the ones with class red. If we want to set the ones with class black, we need a new CSS rule for the class black. So here we'll say all elements with the class black will have the background color of black. Awesome, and now we have a checkerboard. And one last thing to note, all of those TD elements used to be blue. But since we made these new rules that were at the class level, the class styling overrode the TD styling, the tag styling. Notice that the width and height still remained. We can still modify the width and height of these elements. For example, we can set them both to 40 and get a little bit smaller checkerboard. But the color was overwritten because that was the only place where we had a conflict. So the class color overwrote the tag color. So that is how we can use the class attribute to add specific style to groups of elements on our web pages. Now it's your turn.